Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. I'm Brendan Lee. In this video, I want to talk about and help clarify a comment that I got on YouTube regarding the existence of things. And take a look. So this comment comes from Kate Bobate, 1188. Thanks for writing in. I appreciate it. Question, the answer of which may well be... Okay, so there's a question that may be somewhere in the video. If our brain, a three-pound pile of mush that lives within a hard shell that is completely secluded from all light, sound, physical touch, etc. So you've got a brain inside your skull. And our entire experience is therefore completely composed of our senses, which is smashed together and interpreted by said enclosed pile of mush, your brain. Doesn't that in and of itself give validity to the existence of it, or of something, we could say, which I'll clarify what it is later. This reminds me of the age-old question, if a tree falls in the woods and there's no one around to hear it, does it make a sound? So how, does, how is it different, or rather separate, than our experience or perception of it? And how does it exist without our perception of it? Cool, thank you for writing in. So, um, <clears throat> I don't know where this video is going to go, but in an attempt to clarify, recapping from the previous video, what I believe um, the commenter, what, what I believe she is talking about is, in a previous video, I made mention of something that we do here at the Experiencing the Nature of Being workshop, which you should join if you want to. You join a workshop. They're really good and really powerful. Is we do something, we, we, we take a look at reality and our knowing of things. And we start with re recognizing that you can have a concept. So we could, we could, backing up, you can tag something as it. This is what the commenter is, is referencing. You can tag something as it. So you have something, whatever. It could be a thought, it could be a feeling, it could be an object. It could be it's just something that you're like, okay, there's a thing. Now you can have concepts about the thing. Then you can experience the thing, like sight, sound, touch, all your senses, and then there's it. Tracking so far, so you can have concepts about it, you can experience it, and then there's it. And it sounds like she's wondering, how is it different or rather separate than our perception of it? Well, in one way of holding it, you could hold that in reality, I don't know where this is going to go, you could hold that there is nothing other than what you perceive, in which case, then all you have are your perceptions, and that's it. You could hold it that way, and so I imagine some people do. It's like, well, I, I see something, therefore all I have is my sight, and there's nothing other than my perception. And then I can think about, say, like, I can think about the thing, then I can see the thing, but then there isn't the thing, like it itself. It, there's just sight, or there's just a feeling, or there's just a um, smell, you see? However, it does seem to be the case that we can notice, at least, that if somebody else dies... So, so anyway, so backing up, that's one way of holding it. You can hold that all you've got is your perception, and that's it. In which case, there is no further need for investigation. There is no need to do anything else. And it's just the world is exactly what you see it to be, and you're right about that, and that is all that it is. However, so that's one way you could hold it, hold reality, and I'm sure people do sometimes, I, I imagine. However, we do also usually live that there's more than what we see. That stuff exists outside of our ability to see. For example, using science as a, as a pry bar here, we only see a certain spectrum of color. We don't see UV and we don't see infrared. So that there's more, like our sight is limited. So what else is there? We also notice our hearing has the same similar limitations where we can only hear in certain frequencies. We only hear a certain range. Therefore, we do not hear everything. Therefore, our hearing is also a limitation. It's limited. It's not the whole story. So there's more than our perceptions. 
And there may be even other ways of perceiving that we don't have in our five senses, say. Maybe there is a sixth or a seventh or an eighth or, or unlimited amount of senses, in which case that, that lends credence to the argument that there's a lot more than what we perceive. If so, what, what is that? Now, we, now we're getting more into the unknown territory, the it territory, perhaps, in a certain way, like... We don't know what it is. Or we could argue that we see people die. We know that somebody may die and objects continue to exist, whether they're alive or dead, and we could presume from that, well, when I die, something else is going to, something is going to continue after my death. If so, what is that? And again, we may not, we don't know. Okay? So, <clears throat> now, so how is it different or rather or separate than our experience or perception of it? It may or may not be separate. This is something that we tend to do when we are considering, well, if I, if with all of my senses, like I can see it, I hear it, I smell it, I taste it, I feel it. It, where it is, must be separate from this experience, which is all, all we've got. We would think that. We might think that. Oh, it must be separate. Why, why must it be separate? Because it is not my sight. It is not my taste. It is not my smell. It is not my hearing. It is not my feeling. Therefore, it's not anything I experience. Therefore, it must be separate from my experience. But we take it a step further. Separation itself is something that we experience. It may not be a separation, whatever it is. We also consider that it may exist outside of time. Therefore, there is no place for it to be. And we might think that because there's no place for it to be or we can't see it, it must be somewhere else. Maybe not. Okay, separation is, again, something that we add to the mix. Well, it must be separate. Maybe it's not separate. We don't know. So how does it exist without our perception of it. In this case, to answer your question, you would have to discover what it is. Then you will be able to know, one, if it is, and two, if it is indeed separate or not, or somewhere else or not. Okay? So that's part of the... Um, part of how this goes. The invitation is for you to discover something that your brain, your mind, is not able to apprehend. It's a possibility of what we call direct consciousness, which is to say all perception is indirect. What I mean by that, and what we mean by that, is if I see something, I am seeing something. I'm separate from the thing. Why? Because I see it. Do you get how that's a separation? I'm seeing it, which is to say I'm over here seeing it over there. Or I feel it. I feel it. The feeling is something I get, and then there's it. Again, a separation. That's not... Okay? So all perception is indirect like this. Direct... What we mean by direct is you and it are in the same place kind of thing. You're there where it is. And one of the huge challenges with this kind of consideration is all our experience, all perception, all we've got is experience and perception and mind. That's all we've got. And we try to use this perception and experience and mind to try to apprehend the nature of something, get what it is directly, and it can't do that. 
your mind can't do that. You can try, but it won't be able to do that. You will not be able to use your mind to do that. You can't perceive something that is not itself a perception. Okay? So then your mind will probably come up with, and I'm glad you asked the question because it's like, it tells me you're struggling, you're working on it, this is good, and you're going, what? I don't fucking get it. That's the point. <laughs> okay? It's useful to get that you don't get something and perhaps get also in the same moment that there is something to get. There is something to grasp of which your mind goes, uh, boss, we can't fucking do that. Like, we can't get there from here. I know. And at the same time as you can't get there from here with your mind and all of your perceptions and even your feelings and whatever, there is this possibility. We call this possibility, we call it becoming directly conscious. There's a possibility that you could become conscious of the nature of said thing, whatever it is, directly. And this is not done like a perception. It is not done like a thought. It is not done like a feeling of some thing. It is direct. There's no space. Yeah, what I mean by that, there's no separation between you and it, the subject. We call that a direct consciousness. Other people call it an enlightenment experience. You see? And so it is toward this possibility that I am directing you with the video. I am not attempting to give you an answer, okay, like rhetorical syndicate is doing in the, the additional comment. This person is giving you an answer, in part because consciousness is not bound to physical bodies and brains. You can leave your body spontaneously by training to or through a near-death crisis or death itself. See, and then the body is a spiritual technology in a sense. All of the physical senses exist in non-physical realms as well, along with others that most can't or won't access while in the body. Uh, just a bunch of blah, 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 blah bullshit. It's just more crap. Okay? And we as God consciousness made this place for a blah, blah, blah. Okay, so rhetorical syndicate has taken it upon themselves to give you an answer, which may or may not be correct. And all that stuff does is push you in the direction of just believing what somebody else might say you just take, we could take rhetorical syndicate's comment at face value and go like, yes, that, that person is telling the truth, they know what it is, but even if they were telling the truth, which who the fuck knows, getting an answer doesn't have you become conscious. It gives you an answer, it gives you something to believe, and it gives you just like a surface level idea about something that may or may not be true, and we don't know. You will not know for sure. You would have to then verify if that's even true. Okay? So in the spirit of this work, you know, Kate Bobate referenced the previous video. I want you to use the video to enhance your ability to question and wonder and consider for yourself what's true. And rhetorical syndicate, use the video to do the same and don't just spout off a bunch of crap in the comments that you probably just made up and you're believing. Hmm? The thing to do would be for you to grasp the true nature of something personally and then talk about that so you can speak with some authority. Otherwise, it's just pontification, which, again, does not lead anybody to grasping anything for themselves. It's just like jacking off. Okay? So, you got that? Cool. So, Kate, thanks for writing in. I appreciate that. And, yeah, some interesting questions to consider. And my main purpose for making this video is, again, to invite you to this possibility of becoming directly conscious. How do you do that? Well, you consider. You wonder for yourselves, grasp for yourself what's true, and you tell me what you discover. Okay? Otherwise, um, I hope that answered your question. I hope that has given you a little more clarity. Okay? Thanks for writing in. Appreciate it. Good luck out there, everybody. Keep working hard. Talk to you later. I'll see you in the next video.
If you do want to get serious, please check the links in the description. Come out here, do a workshop. Um, they're really powerful events. Check the links. Also, I do monthly Zoom calls. I also have a forum where people can ask me questions. It help helps me create content for you. Okay? Much love. Take care. Good luck. Talk soon.